Hey guys, it's Barrett with the Gimby Camper. So I know a lot of people's been wondering, Barrett, where you been? Cause you went a while without making some videos, then you started showing up again. So during that pause, this is what I was working on. So I took some uh, cues from the outdoor kitchen in my camper because I love that thing so much. I wanted that feel from home. Then, you know, COVID was going on. There was a lot of, re a lot of reservations that I had that got canceled. There was a bunch of issues that I had and so i thought what can i do to get that camping feel at home so i was like let's build that deck we always wanted to build and let's build an outdoor kitchen on it ended up being a lot more money than what i had anticipated which i don't know about you but my projects always are they cost way more and they take way longer than i ever anticipated however i'm pretty proud of the projects that i've done around here um you know before we had cedar siding on the house we did get new siding on i did not do that because i don't do well on a ladder uh, with my legs after just a little while it drives me nuts and cramps up and all that stuff so i had the siding put on after i got the decks done and i think that it looks really nice before you know we had cedar siding I personally liked it, but I let a lot of it go too far. So it was dry rotted, it was gonna to have to be replaced. So I had a guy come put vinyl on. We're personally happy with it. Um, I think it looks better because it blends in better. Before, you know, we had brown siding and the cedar siding, and then the bottom was stucco and it was like that classic, like tan color stucco and it was just kind of awkward because it went so high and i really wasn't sure how this was going to go when my wife said that she wanted to do vinyl siding because i was like well, what are we going to do with that stucco area are we going to paint it white like the trim of the siding or what are we going to do and finally i decided well let's just paint it the same color as the siding and i think it turned out good i'm really pleased with the way it's turned out so I'm just gonna kind of show you around here. I did rebuild the front deck cause it was rotted and about to fall over, but I think that it was built the year before I was born. So it held up quite long. And I think part of the reason for that was that they used two by six boards for the decking material. But you know, you can only get things to last so long. So I took extra waterproofing precautions when I built these decks things I've never even heard of such as joist tapes putting over the top of the joist that way it kind of seals it off from water I also did a hidden fastener system it was called the camo system I've been pretty pleased with that too so it doesn't show the screws in the top of the boards uh, they go in basically kind of toenail in from the sides and I'm really happy with that so you know I rebuilt that front deck that was it only goes out eight feet so it's eight by 24 because that's how wide my house is and the back deck you know there's a pretty significant hill underneath this deck so i i fought with the idea because i tend to overdo things um but my wife agreed let's just do it so we went 20 feet out from the house and it's 24 feet wide so it's 20 by 24 uh, I actually built it as basically two 10 foot decks that are joined together. Um, so the joists go out 10 feet from the house and then they go another 10 feet out on six by sixes. I just rebuilt the front as it was before because it seemed to hold up really good. And so they're on four by fours, but I did put in some concrete piers because that was another issue that it was having. And I did all the concrete piers back here. The front decks just, you know, your basic deck. I did add a few bells and whistles to the whole thing. Like I have uh, low voltage outdoor landscape lighting that I built into the handrails. And so, you know, for those of you that don't know, solar is a good option, but for some reason, you know, a lot of times it's not as bright. It's more expensive uh, if you get the good solar lights, which are fairly bright. And it just doesn't tend to hold up as long. And so I did go with the low voltage landscape lighting. So in the rails, I'm gonna show you an overlay of that here. I put the lights in. I got those lights off of Amazon. They seem to be doing a really good job. I also went ar around the sidewalk with some low voltage landscape lighting. And when you drive by my house now, it looks like a, a runway. So it's pretty bright. 
I almost didn't even put a light by the door um, because it lights everything up. Back here in the back, we use less lighting on purpose. In the front of the house, I did put one light between each post on the handrail to get it extra bright for security. Back here in the back, uh, we did about between every other post and that way there would still be some lighting but not to be overpowering and leave some ambience there as well as i did wire in some lights in the kitchen here there's a light here that hangs over the griddle i use this opportunity as an excuse to upgrade to the 36 inch griddle with the air fryers in it and i've been happy with that so far usually i look at those uh, upper levels of griddles is as cheap and gimmicky but i have sam pretty happy with air fryers i'm not sure that they're really worth the amount of money extra that that costs but i, I do use them more than i thought i would um, there's also a light that's on the front of this kitchen bar area uh, i wanted a bar area here for food preparation and as well as eventually i want to get a couple of bar stools to sit on the front that way we can sit here and eat if we want to and we also have the string lights that you see everywhere around um, what we call a shade cell pergola. So basically I was trying to find some ways to have some creative shade that weren't like crazy expensive. And so I built a square out of four by fours and initially had two shade cells that were triangular shaped that I put on there. And it worked out pretty well, but the two triangles to form this square weren't right triangles, they were equilateral triangles. And so that means that they didn't fit to cover the square perfectly because there wasn't that right angle on the end. So I ended up getting two more of those shades and because at first I hung it up and it looked like an underwear crotch. It was like, I had this big dip in the middle and it really didn't provide that much shade. And then I did put some uh, PVC roofing panels over the top of the kitchen here because I wanted to be able to cook in the rain. Initially, I was going for like the uh, tinted clear the roofing panels, but they didn't have, uh, when I made the order, they didn't have any of those in. And apparently Lowe's has a hard time with those. And so I did go with the PVC roofing panels and they seem to be doing pretty well. I think this really helped our curb appeal. We still got to work on some landscaping and stuff, but I hung this flag up at the front. I ordered it off Amazon. I didn't really pay attention as much as the dimensions as I should have. And it was quite a bit bigger than what I anticipated, but I'm pretty happy with it. It looks really nice. I have with the landscape lighting, I have a spotlight at the end of the sidewalk that shines up on the flag and it doesn't provide a whole lot of light on the flag, but it does light it up a little bit at night. And it's really pretty. There's also a motion light out there. And whenever the motion light goes off, it lights up more. The initial area that you walk out of when you go through the door that does come out of our bedroom because we didn't have a hallway that goes to the back of the house or anything. This was a window until I put a door in. I put a doggy door in for our little puppers. I mean, if you hadn't seen the videos for when we go camping, I'm going to recommend that you watch our video on the Rover Roamer it makes life tremendously easy when you travel with your dogs okay so i'm just going to link that in the in the video here but we first come out we get to our fire pit area so we have an uncovered area i would say it's probably about 12 feet by 10 feet and the solo stove sits in the middle of that to the left coming out of the house of the fire pit area is the 10 by 10 shade cell pergola but that's just kind of an additional seating area with some shade in the summertime. And then in front of that's just kind of, it's where the steps are. Uh, it's kind of a blank area. We can put some additional seating there if we want to. And then behind the fire pit area and beside the stairs, we have our kitchen here. Our kitchen, uh, we have this countertop that I made. I just used two by tens or two by eights. The, this one's two by eights because I uh, cut my two by tens too short and that really made me mad and I didn't want to go back to the store. But basically I used uh, pocket hole screws to join these boards together as well as wood glue. 
and then I sanded it down and burned it with a torch, which made my wife very anxious. And then went over it with some varnish and some clear coat. And I'm really happy with it, except for there's a couple of areas where, uh, because it was under so much stress with the heat and stuff that it did crack the wood there. It's not horrible because this is a deck, we're outside. I do need to, you know, fill that in with some caulking or something, but you know, it gets the job done. And I have three separate cabinets under here that I made doors for. Um, it works out well. I've not really got stuff stocked out there yet. Over here on this side, we have a shelf over our refrigerator. We have an outdoor fridge sitting here. That was directly from the camper because I love having a fridge outside. I did put a countertop over it and the cabinet around it. This particular fridge said that it needed to have five inches of clearance on each side. And so that's why the cabinet's a little bit larger than the fridge. And the fridge is a little bit bigger than I had initially planned. Um, but when I built the cabinet around so that it had the room, I was really trying to keep everything level with the edge of the blackstone. So the countertops were, were just the same level, but that this one is a little bit higher. Um, it's only about a half an inch higher, so it's not a real big deal. I've never been one of these people that, that are like, you got to have wind guards. I've never needed a wind guard, but I thought if we're going to build this monster of a deck and we're going to have the creme de la creme of black stones here, then we're going to need to do something just to say that we did it the best way possible. So I did get some concrete board and basically the uh, area of the handrail that has the vertical balusters on it, like you see back here, that area I have concrete board over uh, just to block any wind or anything there so that I never have to have any issues with the wind. And what I did with the concrete board, just so it doesn't look obvious there, I painted it, I did prime it, and then I painted it flat black on both sides. And so if you're out in the yard and look at it, it just looks dark in behind the, the handrails. And if you're up here, it just kind of blends in with the black stone. Back in the corner there, I do have another cabinet that does have a um, completely level surface with the side shelf of the black stone and we keep a trash can underneath the corner of the blackstone there. That shelf I was initially going to build a door for, but I guess I got kind of lazy after building all these other doors for the, the countertop area. And so I decided we were just gonna have some open storage there. The last thing that I wanted to point out about this outdoor kitchen that I wish was in my outdoor kitchen at the camper is that fellow back there. This sink is great. So that means I can come out here, I can wash my hands while I'm cooking. I can rinse things off. I can wash the dishes if I want to. Um, I, first I was just gonna run cold water out here. And so I did that. But I decided, why not run hot water? If I'm gonna run a cold water line, just run a hot water line right beside it. I just wanted to say thanks guys for uh, sticking around and watching this video. If you really like what we did here, hit that like button. Don't forget to uh, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, that kind of stuff. We have a couple more good videos, I think, coming out for you here in the next couple weeks. And so stay tuned. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe.